<laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about um, injection plugin for Xcode, which is a tool I discovered, uh, well, no, I discovered it a very long time ago, but this weekend I put a bunch of effort in into testing and using it. And like went and read all these document, all the documentation, read the README, uh, figured out how it all works. And I want to explain like how it all works because this thing is like bloody amazing. Um, so injection for X, injection plugin for Xcode uh, effectively reduces the time it takes for you to iterate when you are building something. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'll take you through the uh, the README a little bit, take you through installing on Alcatraz, and then uh, I'll like build some uh, a view controller in the way that I probably would do in day-to-day -day life for my work at Artsy. Um, so the README talks a lot about like the actual real techniques that it uses to inject code at runtime, but unless you really care about V tables, then you probably don't need to know all of it. Um, the interesting parts here are like go to Alcatraz and install it, which is um, you should probably have Alcatraz already installed. You go to Package Manager, you type an injection in the top, and you click that button. Magic. Um, then you restart Xcode and it's available. <laughs> I like that this image is upside down. Um, okay, once that's installed, you then get given uh, these extra menu items at the bottom of product. So there's an injection v6.4 intro, which is where I got a bunch of information too about how it all works and how the pieces all come together. Um, but really, the only thing you need to know about is inject source. Um, so what is in here? There's a console. You'll see this pop up uh, whenever. This is like the build console, similar to what you see up here sometimes when you click on like this and have it down the side. Um, there is also uh, tunable app parameters which is cool but we'll not go into which allows you to like at runtime inject new values in from from like a, a naught to something that will then get directly put into your app so you can test things pretty quickly it's like if you're doing waves or whatever you can change heights or x and y positions quickly um, but we're not going to go into that what we're just going to go into is looking at how long uh, speeding up our development cycle so I'm going to not use storyboards for this, uh, even though I have a storyboard, although I do need to do a little bit of work in the storyboard in order to get started. So before we start, uh, this is just a plain and simple app that I made. Um, it's got no launch screen, it's got a simple view controller as the root thing, no code in the view controller, no code in the app delegate. In the pod file, uh, it's just got some artsy like UI things that I normally use, uh, like solid defaults, so that I don't have to like, try and customize any views that I want to create. Uh, you'll note that we're all built. All of this is done in Swift too, um, which it seems to work fine with. So I'm gonna get started, and uh, I'll show you this. We're gonna compile it. We're gonna compile it from scratch like normal. So and we're gonna count how long this takes. And this is on a Mac Pro, right? So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh no, wait, it might not be right. It might, it might, I might have got that wrong, you know. <laughs> you see the sneakers next to me, it's fabulous. Um, yeah, this might be running. Oh no, it really did take that long. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna call that one a fluke and just imagine that that is not the normal cycle. So I'm gonna just gonna like rerun it from scratch. So from run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Surely something's wrong. <laughs> okay, and that is how long this is taking for me to like do a cycle. Like if, even if that is something that's wrong, that's still a bit weird. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you the techniques of which uh, I've come upon for like injecting code into the actual app. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to write some code that will get notified when uh, there has been an injection of code into your app. This is pretty easy because uh, it just sends an NS notification. So I can just do an NS notification uh, default center add observer. Self so selector has injected, it gets passed in its notification object. Uh, the name is injection bundle notification, and the object is nil. So this means uh, a function has injected gets called uh, when it has 
uh, when code has been injected into the app. No. And oh no, you call it a notification. It's an NS notification type. Wrap it in. Okay. Um, I want to create a new view controller where I'm going to write some code. So I'm creating a new file, new to touch chaos called a uh, new view controller. Let's yeah, let's be really I mean, imaginative. Uh, this is just going to have view to load. I can kill everything else. Um, we're going to load that up from scratch. Um, so this is going to, we're going to make it show in this uh, iPhone. So whenever has injected is called, uh, we want to get our per current uh, navigation controller. So navigation controller, uh, soft navigation controller, uh, pop. So at one point I am X pop two, no, just pop view controller. Uh, I expect to have a view controller. Uh, I will not animate it. Um, already there because we will do it in a second. Uh, then I create one, so it's a new view controller. Uh, let VC equal new view controller open close, and then I push it on my navigation server. So dot no, question mark dot push view controller VC animated true. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna recompile this one. Although I think I could do it without. Um, let's try it. So you see it, <laughs> I'm pointing at the screen. You see these, this little bar here? <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's complaining that I haven't compiled the other one in. So let's compile the other one in. Uh, all right, it's in, built. And we'll run it so then when it's injected in, everything is good. Okay. Oh, I haven't made any, <laughs> this doesn't actually have a story button, uh, a navigation controller. So let's make sure we do that. This is easy because you can just do embed in navigation controller and ta-da, you now have a navigation controller. We're going to remove the top bar. Great. Now it looks pretty. Do I have to do it in here too? I can't remember. Let's do it anyway. Okay, so look again, see how long this, this cycle of, of the reload is? Okay, so while that's doing its thing, uh, I'm going to start on this. Okay, that's good. I presume. Yep, that's my that's my root view controller. So that's this. Now, whenever we run this this command here, uh, inject sauce, which I have as control and equals, which is the default, you'll see this bar come across. So that's it compiling. The first time it takes a little bit longer, and then after that, it's usually a bit shorter. Maybe everything's really slow. Okay, and there we go. So it has ran this code, which is it pops a view controller that was currently on, and then it pushes a new view controller. And the new view controller is blank because that's what they are by default. Now, anytime I do control and equals, it will recompile and send it in, which is great. So I can now use this to build out this view controller really quickly. So I can say background color view the background color equals dot uh, white color. Uh, and if I do that, it sends it in, and there you go. That's how long it took to to put to do this new stuff. So what I'm going to do is quickly make out a class, just to, uh, just make it. This is show like general process. So I need a stack. I'm going to need some of my fonts. Uh, I'm going to need some of my labels. Going to probably need FLK or layout because I'm very reliant on that, and that should be enough to start building. Um, so I'm going to create a stack view. So let's stack equal our stack view. Uh, I'm going to align it to the top, so it should be fine there. So I'll just say uh, add it to the sub view. Uh, to sub view dot add sub view stack. Puts it in. Uh, and then I need to align it to something. So stack view dot align leading trailing. Yep. So zero distance from one edge, zero distance from the other edge to view view, which means it will be like on the top and the, the top the left and the right so far, and then I'll align it to the top. Um, so align top edge with view, view, and predicate again. I mean, it's going to have that toolbar, that status bar, so it probably should be 20. Okay, and we can test it. Well, we could test it, but we're not going to see anything actually because it's white and there's nothing in it. So now we've got a stack. Uh, we can verify it by looking at reveal. Uh, there we go. So we've got literally nothing but a stack view inside that has no height. 
Okay, next up. So let's grab a, let's make a label. We'll have a title on it. So that title could be like title equals AR sensor. I feel like let's go all out. Uh, Title.text equals hello world. And we just add it to our stack. So stack .add subview uh, title top margin of probably zero and then a side margin of 20, which is just consistent with artsy stuff. I can compile that in. Now I've got a title. So if I do the title dot font uh, equals uh, UI font dot uh, oh, I haven't included that. It's interesting that like Swift will only provide the symbols for things that you have specifically included, but not its dependencies. Sans serif font with size, uh, 60. Sure, let's do it. And if I wasn't happy, then it wouldn't be expensive for me to try something else. So for my eight. Right? Easier to iterate. Um, okay, this is good. Let's uh, add some lorem ipsum. There it goes, AR serif label, open close. Uh, lorem dot text equals. I've got this in my history probably. Yep. Uh, let's just have one paragraph, uh, and then I can add that to my stack view too. So stack dot add subview lorem, and we add it with top margin. Top margin of like how far away should it be from hello world? Just probably something like twelve. Side margins, uh, let's go all out and we can have it 40 in on each. Uh, and I can compile that in. Cool. No, definitely too far. Top margin is terrible there. Also, why is that so far away? I guess <laughs> that's what you could check out and reveal, I guess. Uh, it looks like this is massive. So that's, that's a bug with our sub views, obviously. Um, let's make it a bit smaller. Better do. Should fix everything. Yeah, it's not optimal. But anyway, you get the point that like it is very quick for me to make like real code changes to view controllers this way. And like this is like substantially faster than the ways that I've been building uh, a lot of the work I've been doing at Artsy for the last few days, which is um, you can I'll get you a get you a pull request. So here's what they generally look like. They are like here is an example of the UI changes that I've made, and it's like, you know, a few hundred lines of code that's just straight up UI and stubbing. That like, if I'd have been doing it this way instead of, uh, you know, ten to eight seconds uh, per re per reload cycle, I could have just done it in like under a second every time, and that would have been substantially faster. Um, and so that's generally injection for Xcode. It's like. There's some weirdness where it um, it adds a iOS injection project to your fol to the current folder. Um, you can go in and like declare it as should be ignored, and you get ignore, which is what I did. Um, you can also like dynamically inject onto existing classes. So currently, what you saw in my what I did here was look for this injection uh, notice, and then actually do the work there. But in theory, if you wanted to, and like, uh, you could just do injected as a function, and I'm pretty sure this just gets called uh, if it exists in memory. See how it's now done a debugger just like that? I just added that function, and then it gets called into there, and it automatically gets called by, assumably, the injection method of uh, Xcode for whatever they call this plugin again. Um, and that's really awesome. That's a really interesting way of working. Uh, I only injected the current file. That's why it redid this. Um, and that's pretty awesome. I think I think I think a lot of us could improve our speed uh, by doing this. Um, it's like some of the advantages of React, but oh yeah, native, but without having to write JavaScript. Um, and it, it's like a development process that we should look at. So uh, hook it up. Give it a try. Pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. Happy enough to make this video. Um, the, as I said, the reading is pretty dense, but uh, it's totally worth it, especially considering the amount of time you could be saving. Um, so cool. Uh, have a good day, everyone. Ciao, ciao. Oh, wait. Do you have any questions? She, she's shaking her head, so I guess not. All right. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>